Okay, perfect. Here you go. Hi, welcome everyone to Midwives Uncut. Uncut. <laughs> <laughs> so today we have um, a topic that we wanted to discuss that kind of flows really well with um, coming off of our big debut uh, for the nice birth that Sandy did in the parking lot. And we had so many people inquiring about, you know, midwives, they weren't really um, un understanding midwives and OBs and all of that stuff. And, and so we thought, well, now is a perfect time to kind of go into the midwifery model of care. Yes. And um, yeah, <laughs> so go ahead, Sandy, you start well, off. I well, a lot of the questions was like, why, you know, why didn't I have a crew there? Well, Delina and I are the crew. <laughs> um, and so it's very different for midwives and especially in an out of hospital setting. And a lot, I mean, if I have to hear the wheelchair thing one more time, <laughs> uh, we, we, we have a wheelchair. <laughs> Just, Mom, we do. It's in the back of the building where no one was. Exactly. Um, and also, you know, in, when low risk mothers deliver with midwives, they are considered low risk, healthy and strong. And it was, you know, we were talking about this the other day when let's say, let's say we have a birth in the, in the bathroom, right, Galena? They have to walk to the bed. <laughs> yeah, we're not like, remember, we're dealing with low risk, healthy women. So there is no, um, you know, medical or health factor that would prevent them from being able, matter of fact, us seeing them walk shows us that they're handling it well, not that we're encouraging them, we want them to rest and believe me, we're the first to honor the postpartum oh, yeah. resting period, but, uh, but being able to do that allows us to, to, to kind of say, okay, well their body is processed the birth well, there's no serious trauma that we're not seeing and it helps us better care for them. You know. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and that's, and well, another thing was, you know, why did, why did we become midwives? I think that's a, that's an awesome question. Um, I'll let you start. Why did you? Oh man. <laughs> okay. I was hoping you were going to start, but that's fine. <laughs> so I don't know. I think the reason why, well, I, I know the reason why I became a midwife. So I have a lot If you guys don't know. I have a lot of kids. And my first one is uh, 18, so it's, you know, a while. I had them before I even knew what a midwife was, the older two, three, four, four of them before a midwife. And um, uh, so my oldest one, we had a bit of a journey with, I was very much medicalized with my pregnancy and birth with her. I was induced, um, I had epidural, like it was very medical. And so she came out with having uh, quite a few issues. And not that I point the finger at one or the other, but I certainly recognize the potential for everything to play a role in the development because of all of those unnatural things that were given to her at a time where the body probably could have benefited from not having it. And so when I learned about how to kind of clean up her body and purify everything, and how it would allow her body to function and fight off, you know, and fix itself in a sense, I was like, wow, this is amazing. There's a whole natural world out there. It just didn't even, it was like a light turned on that I didn't even know existed. And so um, then somebody had mentioned something like, oh yeah, I said, I wish I could have gotten to her like, like when I was pregnant, like I wish I could have been known about being natural during my pregnancy. And they're like, oh yeah, like, like, when, like someone has a midwife. And I was like, what's a midwife? And then that was it. That was the, that spark and the seed. And there went my entire journey. As soon as I figured out what a midwife was, I said, yes, I want to help women be as natural as possible. So this child has the opportunity to develop as naturally as it can. And though however route it goes, at least we know we were natural from the start and we gave it a good chance. And that was really what kind of pushed me into doing midwifery a lot. So that's me. Your turn. You're it. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I, 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 I feel the same way. I guess in my, in my case, I remember hearing from my mom that I was delivered by a midwife. And at some point in high school, I was like, I want to be a midwife. But I didn't um, 
there, I didn't know of any programs or schools. So then I was going to be a writer. <laughs> and <laughs> that was, that was kind of like what I was doing. But then I had my first son and then my first son was born in the hospital. Um, I remember during his pregnancy, watching like TLC, a baby story and seeing water bursts. I was like, I want that. That's what I want. And I had absolutely zero support from anyone in my family or in my circle. They were basically telling me I was going to kill my baby. They basically told me that that was crazy. And so, of course, I was a young mom. I didn't know any better. I, I, I really had not done enough research on my own. And so I just kind of went ahead and, and followed everyone's recommendations. And I had an OB. And um, I remember I had met all the OBs. Of ex yeah, I had met all the OBs in the group. And there were two that I loved, uh, a woman that I really, really wanted. And um, I, then there was a man and he was actually married to a lactation consultant and she had natural births and, you know, it was very mind, like, like-minded. And so I said, this is definitely who I want to deliver my baby because they were really open to what I wanted. Well, when the birth came around, that was not who was there. I had met everyone in the practice except for one doctor. And that was a doctor that was there. And I got to tell you, you know, I <clears throat> wasn't expecting to be treated a certain way. And just the things that came out of his mouth and just kind of, you know, making me feel like I was doing something wrong with trying to have a natural birth in the hospital. And I remember feeling like, this can't be it. I went to childbirth classes. This is not what they taught me. Like, they said that I would have these different options and choices. And so... Either way, long story short, my first son, which is about to be 15, uh, was kind of who ignited my fire as well. And so um, a friend of mine delivered at a birthing center in Miami. And when I saw her birth and, and I saw the experience and, and I realized, oh, my God, I, I can be a midwife. I can do this. I can I can show moms that they have choices and, and I can you know, care for them like I would want to be cared for and, and give them those options. I, that was it. I was hooked. And so it's, it's interesting how, kind of, you know, life events kind of ignite that fire and, and you just, you got to move forward with it. And I think that's the thing with like midwifery care. It's a passion that it people is. have. It, it is a passion for women to want to empower and care and support and protect a special time in a woman's life that certainly in current times does not get respected enough. And it, it's such an amazing moment that, you know, when you see another person get, you know, empowered, you, you know, it's like, it helps you because it's like a circle, you know, and you all become this empowered group of women. And, and I don't know, you know, how you can't, have a drive for it after you see something like that and I love it I mean I'll tell you I, sure Sandy and I complain and we get tired and we're exhausted and you know uh but there boy you get a baby coming and suddenly all of those problems are gone it's so true and we are like on it and excited and, and just as excited as it was like for the first one that's the crazy part you know so, yeah and I, I know like if, if Galena calls me at three in the morning it's it's really funny it, I struggle to get up to make it to an appointment on time, like, you know, a doctor's appointment. And I'm like, oh, I'm dragging. She'll call me at three in the morning and I'm there in like 20 minutes. It's and so different. Yes. It's very different. How re I guess because we just fly out and we don't like have to get people ready and, you right. know, things like that. Yeah. Just put on our scrubs and let's go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's the excitement of what we're heading to. And then being like the caretaker and knowing that if there is a problem, our job is to step in and normalize it. it it's, um, you know, that's empowering as well. And, and that really, it's uh, the adrenaline that I feel when I, when I do my job, you know. I think I also love the relationships that we build. I know that a lot of times we become close with our mamas even after the baby is born. You know, I, I often will get like little updates of mom sending me like, the babies. Oh, look, the baby's five months. Oh, the baby's a year. And, and I, and I, and I love that our moms, you know, care about us as much as we care about them and trust us and feel like we're friends and family afterward. I think that that makes it so much more rewarding. That's how it should be. You it know, should. you saw my Yoni, like, <laughs> you know, we, you should, we should be able to say hi to each other still, exactly. you know, 
very intimate moment in our life. The bush was in your face. <laughs> and Let's we don't talk. Care. Listen, they're all beautiful, bushy, bald, whatever you'd prefer, <laughs> okay? <laughs> but the, like that type of intimacy, you don't want to break that relationship so quickly, you know? It's like, it's like your best friend, you know? They know secrets about you. Ex exactly. <laughs> So that kind of is what pushed us into, um, you know, becoming midwives. And, and I also think, you know, a lot of people are like, why don't you become an OB or, you know, so understanding the difference. And so, and I think the best way and, and what we're wanting to talk about today is uh, what is that difference? What is the midwives model of care? Mm -hmm. And, um, and so Sandy had found two, cute little things that kind of simplify the midwife's model of care. It's not super complex, but I like the images. Can you share your screen, Sandy? Yes, I can. Oh, crap. Only the host can share in this meeting, Galena. Oh, no. Well, I can share my, um, I can share the mana one, but I don't have the fun images one. Let's see here. Well, we, so, why don't you touch on some of it while I try to figure out how maybe I can find it. Okay, so um, the midwife model of care is basically um, what all midwives follow when they are becoming a midwife and when they are a midwife. And it, it, is, it has been written and put in that place so that we can have um, almost like a, like a goal to go off of. It, it more of like a structured way of caring for our moms and our families. And so, you know, if you Google midwifery model of care, you're going to see there's the Manimo website. There's a lot of things online that will explain it to you so that you can better understand uh, what it means. And so it's, you know, monitoring the physical, physiological, social well-being of the mother throughout the childbearing cycle. And so that's, if you think, if you listen to the words, <laughs> you'll know it's not just taking care of them medically, but we are basically taking care of them physically, psychologically, uh, socially, emotionally. Uh, there's so much that goes into it. It's amazing, Sandy, that I cannot find that image. <laughs> right? <course>. Like, <laughs> unbelievable. I found all the other breakdowns. Well, I'm going to share the screen just to show the mana. Um, the MANA breakdown. So MANA is a, it's called, it's the Midwives Alliance of North America. It's a great website for you guys to be able to go and kind of uh, get statistics on midwives, learn more about what we do, events, conferences. Um, there's so much information. I mean, MANA is a pretty big organization that really helps us, you know, um, get facts and, and, and data so that people understand the safety of midwifery right. care. Mm -hmm. um, by, by actual data, you know, so that's the part that I like. And why can't I? Oh, here we go. Midwives model of care. Okay, so let me share my screen, guys. You would think that we never did this before. Hold on. <laughs> We're trying to be all fancy, and it's just not working out. <laughs> We're not fancy. We're not fancy. All right, share screen. Here we go. I'm gonna share it. Okay, so here's the website, Midwives Alliance of North America. Um, and it kind of just goes over the model of care, right? And what is it that we, we're, and it's a woman-centered care. And it's really about us giving you back the power, right? Absolutely. And the best way to do that, and I, we often, like when we're teaching our childbirth classes, we'll say stuff like, you know, the terminology that we use is important because it's either if you don't know what people are saying about you and at a very vulnerable state, which would be labor, it's takes away power, right? If people are above you using like all these terms that you're not familiar with, and then you're just like, okay, whatever you say, I guess, cause I have no idea, right? So our model of care is a lot of education and childbirth classes are included in that. Um, and the benefit of that for you as a woman is that you understand what we're talking about. So when I say to you, this is what's going on with, you know, this, you can easily say, oh, okay, well, okay, I'm comfortable with that. Or no, I, I don't really like that. And you become more involved in your care. Um, and 
And, you know, being a mom, you have to make big decisions for your child. Yeah. So it starts prenatally. And when and that educate, happens, and yeah. educated decisions too. We want, we want to make right. sure that you understand what decision you are making. You understand when we tell you, are you okay with this? That you, yes, you are clear. Not that you're okay with it because, oh, do you think it's okay? No, no, no. You, the power is in your hands. This is your pregnancy. This is your experience. And you are birthing this baby. I've had my births. Galena's had hers. Right. This is, your, this is all about you. So how they talk here about the monitoring the physical, psychological, and social well-being of the mother throughout the childbearing cycle, that, and, and, and even the next line, individualized education, counseling, we're such a, we're so much more than just the medical aspect of it. Yes, right. that's key for safety, uh, for catching things early. Having that medical background will help us keep you low risk by picking up problems early on before right. they become big problems. Mm -hmm. But also our, our umbrella encompasses preparing you to motherhood, supporting you into motherhood, um, you know, and, and then of course being there for any other, you know, questions that you have. Like when moms text me, is this the right vitamin or can I take this? I love that because then that tells me that you are aware that you have to be responsible <coughs> for your care. It's not, mm -hmm. don't give me the power, you take the power. I'm just here as a resource, you know? Right. right. And as it says, the application of this model has been proven to reduce the incidence of birth injury, trauma, and cesarean section. That's the reason why this uh, model of care was put into place because right. we spend so much time with all of our moms and we make sure that if there's any questions, any concerns, we go over them. They have access to us 24 seven. They, you know, it, they're not calling an answering service. They're calling us directly because we are completely available to go over all of these things and make sure that mom is clear, but not just mom, dad too, like the whole family when they're with a midwife it makes a huge difference because then they're they're making uh, um they're they're making choices as a family not just as okay well this is what the doctor or so, this is where what my provider said i had to do i'll tell you i went to this birth last night and i forgot to tell you sandy the it was a six-year-old girl her daughter was there and it was so cute because she you know uh the people, some of the people wanted to kind of usher her out of the room and the mom mid labor kept saying, no, 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 I want her in the room. And no one could, you know, understand why she was saying that. And it was like, and then finally she said, this is going to be her one day. I want her to see what it's like. And, and it was a great example for her daughter to understand the intensity, the responsibility, um, the role of the midwife and the mom. And I think that I, it was really cute and even like when I was giving her the postpartum instructions and I was like you need to be on bed rest for three days and she was like how many days I said mommy has to be in bed for three days and she was like no one day and I was like no <laughs> three days <laughs> it's not an argument <laughs> but it was cute to have everybody involved with it it, it made it it normalized it it did and it that's does. how it should be it's absolutely and it's it's so I well, I don't know if I've talked about this in other videos, but I had my son, my oldest son, at his brother's birth. And I think it is so important to teach them early because, yeah. you know, we have, we have a society that teaches our young kids that birth is, is scary and birth is, tr is tr traumatic. And it's, it's this like medical emergency and, oh my God, and, and, and you know, and also, it makes it you can think be, you but can't it, do it. Be. it. It makes women feel like they can't do it without an epidural. Like we're not strong enough. Right. You know? Yeah, I have two boys. Galena has girls, lots of girls, and one boy, but I have two boys. And I, I have one boy in the mix. <laughs> she, she has one boy and all her girls. <laughs> but I always felt like it is super important to teach my boys, especially so that they can be good, That's supportive true. partners and they could be well educated so maybe if their partner doesn't really know um it's which i think they will because having their mom as a midwife she's gonna know um that, you know the difference and choices that they would be well educated to support them because i gotta tell you my 
my husband was the biggest supporter during my whole process of, especially with my home birth. And, um, that that's not always the case. And well, Galena can tell you, we, we, we have clients all the time that, you know, we have moms that are like, yes, this is what I want to do. This is my dream, but my husband's not on board. And, it, and yeah. you know, a lot of times it's because of that. It's because it's of a the lack of knowledge, right? So that it's true. Having Sandy educate her boys, having women educate their sons on, um, what we have to go through and how important it is for for us and the child to go through that process without intervention you know being educated on that will benefit everybody it stems it trickles down had my husband or her husband not been as supportive um we could have had a different outcome and you know it's just it, it, it we need especially at this point in the world we need to lift women up you know and uh, oh for sure and, and so I think this is just all part of it. It, it really all connects, you know, and her yeah, son. And just like the midwifery model of care talks about um, monitoring the physiological, social, and, you know, that part of it is we tell our moms all the time, if your mind is not in it, if you, if, if, if you know, psychologically, emotionally, you are not in it in the moment and you're not really focused and it's, it's going to affect you during your pregnancy and in your labor. So um, it does. There's this doula that we work with in the community and, and I love what she tells moms, labor begins in the mind. And it is so true, but it yeah. stems from the very beginning, from when you first- You got a lot of work to do. You we got, got right. But when you first find out that you're pregnant and, and, this, and the team that you have, you know, throughout the whole pregnancy and every prenatal and what we're going over on your, you know, what, like Galena said, what vitamins are you taking? What are you eating? What's your lifestyle like? Are you doing exercise? Let's talk about well woman exercise. Let's talk about spinning babies. There's so much that we go over in prenatals and that that is the midwif the midwifery model of care is having that relationship and that structure so that we can cover all bases. Right. I agree. Yeah. And um and, and I like the postpartum aspect. And and I never had like bad experiences with my OBs. Um, I didn't, well, it was the same one. Well, no, it was different ones. Um, but either way, I never had a bad experience, uh, but just, I didn't know uh, that there was another option. It's like when you sit on a hard chair and you're like, well, I'm sitting, I'm resting, right? And then you sit on like a really comfortable chair and you're like, I had no idea that this chair existed. Had I known that this comfortable chair existed, I would have sat on it first. Not right. that there was anything wrong with my hard chair, but the comfortable one is better. Exactly. There's a little cushion there that I, my butt feels good on, you know? Right. <laughs> so I, yeah. like what the, I like what Mana says here. Midwives have excellent outcomes. It says that um, the Murphy model is a low tech, high caring model that produces excellent outcomes, not only for low risk women, but for vulnerable and at-risk women as well. And it basically says that across our planet, 80% of people alive today have been born with midwives. You can thank That's me later. Pretty cool. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So, so what, what else do we want to touch on before we wrap it up? Um, well, I mean, it was definitely that and what the difference is. Um, Oh, let's talk about the difference between uh, a birthing center and like, let's say, well, I don't know. You want to talk about birth center and home birth or birth center? Well, birth I do. I think we wanted to talk about um, some of the benefits of the midwifery care on Labor Day, right? How you get to move freely. Right. How we encourage you yes. to eat and drink. Um, how your midwife is protecting your space by trying not to invade it too much. Um, how we really incorporate the as many natural techniques that benefit a mom and labor as we possibly can. The birthing center, I think, is the easiest way for us to do that because it's our center, and so we can purchase everything and put it there. Home yeah. birth, it's up to you to have that there. Uh, I mean, we'll bring a few things for the support side, but more we bring our you know, our equipment for the medical side. Um, but it, it's had, I think that the effect is on Labor Day where you get to see the benefit of the non-invasive supportive, uh, model of care and action. And, and that's, 
um, you know, where women change, I think, their views of birth. It, it's not yeah. You know? I was reading something, uh, I don't remember, I was, we read a lot of things and comments and stuff like that. And I remember reading something that a mom said, you know, when I, when I had my baby with a midwife, I didn't feel like room 31. I felt like, uh, her, and she put her name there and that's exactly how it should be. And, and so how Galena says, you know, we are holding space for you. You know, we, midwives typically take care of I mean, from every culture, every race, every, you know, um, every background you could imagine, you know, and, and so there, there are a lot of like very, let's say, professional people that choose midwives, even though they work in the hospital. And there are a lot of low income moms. And so it's a very wide range of people and, and the care is still the same. Right. Yes. That's one major thing I think that is good for families is that we'll, we, we, we don't discriminate, or at least it's not in our, it's not supposed to be in our nature to discriminate. You know, midwives in general are still around today due to the midwives of color who were um, kind of like pushed to the side and nobody really looked at them. Yeah. Um, and when mod, uh, hospitals started taking over births, they started to really put down midwives and kicking them out. And so women in poor communities, typically women of color, um, they weren't, they didn't have access to be able to go to an OBGYN and go to a hospital. They didn't have the resources for that. So midwifery stayed alive because of those granny midwives and those black midwives that were still doing it because they had to take care of the people in their community. And yep. uh, there's a very the rich rebirth. history, especially in the state of Florida and the South, especially for so many different midwives of color that that really kept midwifery alive for those moms that needed it the most um and i know being a his, hispanic midwife i uh, there's a lot of you know stories from my end as well like my mother-in-law being born with her grandmother that was the midwife of like the little village and keeping it alive there and they didn't have access to hospitals because they lived like hours and hours away so there had to be a midwife there Right, right. Um, so yeah, we give we, we we pay respect to that. We try to remember that. We try to remember where we came from because I think when you remember where you come from, or at least your your you know your it's not a career. It's like a part of who you are. You know, it's like when you remember that of where you came from, um, you you give it the respect as you work every day, and you Absolutely. try not to take it for granted. Um, and I think with that allows you to treat each person with the same respect because you remember what it was like when you learned about your, you know, past midwives that were burned at stakes and, and treated poorly and, you know, um, just accused of so many bad things. And then, you, you know, their struggle. And so you have to constantly represent them well. And, and, and that's something that we try to do every day. And I think it helps and it has shown because the rebirth of midwifery care is certainly coming into play. It's definitely full circle. And, I, and, that's, and that takes it back to what Galena was saying of, of you know, holding space and, 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 feel, and, ha and having a passion for this career and profession because of that, of the rich history, of what we have gone through as mothers and our experiences and seeing other moms and what they've gone through. I know as a midwife, sometimes, especially with all of my moms, I almost feel like a, like a mama bear. Like I'm going to protect this mom. I'm going to make sure I, Galena knows I'm very, I'm very stubborn. Oh, Sandy will, does not play. She will. <laughs> if a mom wants a certain way, a birth a certain way, this is where her birth time was. I am going to try everything in my ability to get it the way that she want. You want a water birth with the head's coming? Hold on, just breathe, breathe. I'm gonna. I'm Give gonna me five that. seconds. I'm gonna fill that tub up. Just hold on. <laughs> so it's I so think good. that makes that makes the difference um, when you're with a midwife. It, it's we are we are gonna go to bat for you. You know we're we're gonna do everything in our power to make sure that you are safe, that you have the birth outcome that you want, and and, and we're gonna try to respect your birth plan. Yep, I agree. So I think that that is our wrap for today's topic. 
<laughs> it's a lot, but it's important for you to understand all about midwifery care because it's it's just deeper than the title. It it runs deep, <laughs> and um, and it's important to know that how much love your midwife is putting into taking care of you, and 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 if we can't do the birth, you still have been so well taken care of. Um, and it hurts the midwife just as much as it hurts you to not have that. And, um, and I just think of kind of respecting everything involved because it's, it's not just a job for us. It, it's, it's a passion and it's a way of life. And um, I, I just think trying to remember that so that you can fully appreciate everybody, your whole birth team. You know? Right. Yeah. And <clears throat> the last thing I'm going to say is if, if there are midwives that work in hospitals too, nurse midwives, and they, they can be amazing uh, advocates and great for moms who can't have an out of hospital birth. So if you still want to have a midwife, but you don't, you're <clears throat> not a good candidate for out of hospital birth, you can definitely, definitely find an amazing nurse midwife that can still offer you the same um, quality, but just in a hospital setting because of, you know, whatever high risk. Oh, yeah, you. research it. They're different, but very good still. Yes, yes. very good. <laughs> so anyway, thank you all for coming. Every time I go this way, I get the sunlight in my face. Um, again, please subscribe. Everybody does this on YouTube when they want you to subscribe below. It's on the bottom, Galena. <laughs> yeah, the bottom, subscribe below. And um, <laughs> if you have questions or topics that you want us to discuss, fire away. We are all yep. about it. We want to make sure that we are engaging you guys properly. So, yes, yes. Um, so thank you all again. And we hope yeah, and, and we are trying our, our, our very best to answer everyone's questions and, and comments. There are a lot, so bear with us. But we are doing our very best to keep up with it. <laughs> And we're still delivering babies, not yeah. parking lots anymore, but still delivering babies. So remember that. Yeah. All right, guys, have a good one. Thank you. All right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs> How do I do? I don't have that.